Hello there, my fellow reptilians, and welcome back to The Witcher Bestiary. The series where we take a look, some would say even an in-depth look, at the creatures, entities and monsters out of the Witcher universe. You probably are not aware of this, but today's topic is the one I've been postponing ever since I started doing Witcher videos. And that's because the Draconids, aka today's topic, is both very rigid creatures, but also very confusing when it comes to their classification. To explain that a little bit, it's because the Draconids also include a subcategory of creatures called Ornithosaurs. To put it as simply as possible, some Draconids also count as Ornithosaurs, but not all Ornithosaurs count as Draconids. To make matters even more confusing, the Journal of the Witcher 1 has creatures like the Basilisk and the Wyvern classified as Ornithosaurs, while the Witcher 3 Journal classifies them as Draconids. So, because I don't want to make things even more convoluted than that, I will adopt a simpler approach. We're gonna make two videos on the Draconids. Today we're gonna say a few words about the category overall, as well as go into detail on some of them, and whatever's left is gonna be part two. To begin with though, let's learn what the Draconids actually are. While the creatures are most commonly associated with the dragon, the most populous members of the order are actually the lesser Draconids, including Draco Lizards, Forktails, and Wyverns. Many of these can easily get confused with a dragon, especially by the ignorant as they do have scaly skin, armor made of bony plates, bat wings, reptilian maws, legs and tails. They are obviously smaller and less intelligent than a dragon, and often possess atrophied forelegs, to the point where certain species have no legs at all. Dragons, in their turn, are much bigger, possess two pairs of well-developed legs, huge wings and tails, and great intelligence. However, mutations from this baseline do exist. A significant part of the Draconids have no wings whatsoever, like the Draco Turtle or the Vigilosaur, and at least one species, the Sea Serpent, has no limbs at all. The danger that the Draconids pose to herds and communities has led to many conflicts with human and non-human races alike. Witchers and some specialist hunters like the Crinifid Reavers have hunted all or some of these creatures, even though the danger is not always lethal. There are notable exceptions as well though. In Zeracania, dragons are venerated and warrior orders like the Faithful have emerged in order to protect the creatures. Even in the Northern Realms and Nilfgaardian Empire, dragons are sometimes perceived as more than just vile monsters, and are displayed on noble banners and coats of arms. Draconids are sometimes bred as pets for guarding purposes. An example is the Wyvern, bred by certain druidic circles and crime bosses too. The mages of Risberg have created an entirely new species of Draconids, such as the Vigilosaur. So, to list all known creatures that are or should count as Draconids, we thus have Obviously the dragon at the top of the list, followed by Basilisk, Draco Lizard, Draco Turtle, Wyvern, Forktail, Nidog, Vigilosaur, and Sea Serpent. I would also like to add the Cockatrice to this list, but apparently that's one creature that's an Ornithosaur first and foremost. With all that knowledge in mind, let us proceed with learning something about each of them. I think it's also worth mentioning that some of the ones I mentioned barely have any lore whatsoever. So instead, we're gonna focus on the more well-known creatures. And probably the most well-known in the entire category, outside dragons of course, is the Basilisk. Simple people call the Basilisk the king of the Zeracanian desert, and often mistake it for a cockatrice. They claim that the beast is filled with such hatred towards all living things, that even its breath is venomous, and its glance turns the unwary to stone. The fact that witchers often encounter basilisks in dungeons and cellars contradicts the legend, and suggests that these creatures can reproduce under any condition, like many of their nasty monster brethren. In fairy tales, the only certain way to kill a basilisk is to hold a mirror in front of its eyes to divert its deadly gaze. A witcher will reply that it is far better to smash the mirror on the creature's head. Contrary to popular belief, basilisks cannot turn anything to stone with their gaze. 
That is small comfort, however, given that their acid, venom, claws and teeth provide them with many other ways to kill. A basilisk loves dark, damp places such as cellars, caves or city sewers. They hunt by day, waiting patiently in hiding for the prey to come to them, then jump out in a flash to unleash a deadly attack. When preparing to fight such a creature, one should drink the Golden Aureole, which will provide resistance to his venom, but also prepare the Dancing Star or Shrapnel Bombs, which work particularly well against the Basilisk. Basilisk leather is a highly valuable material, used to make fashionable shoes and women handbags. For that reason, many men, their courage girded by gold lust, take to hunting them down even if they are not experienced. Most of these hunts will obviously end in disaster, but some do manage to bag their prey, which has led to a drastic decline in the creature's numbers in recent years. Some mages and druids are of the opinion that basilisks should be included in programs meant to safeguard dying species. Everyone else thinks that the mages and druids have gone completely mad. From a physical standpoint, the basilisk is a strange, scaled, lizard-like creature. They have a long tail, a twisted bird-like beak, and four limbs, webbed wings which enable them to fly, and hind legs. The most dangerous weapon of these creatures is not even the sickle-shaped claws or sharp beak, but its deadly poison. The color of the scales, as a rule, is green, but it does turn into yellow on the belly. There are many individuals, from slightly larger than cockatrices, to huge creatures with the body the size of a horse or a small dragon. They are infamous for their temper, and are considered one of the most malevolent and aggressive creatures in the world, comparable only to the vicious Striga. Thus, even a bound or cage basilisk will do their damnedest to break free and kill anyone within reach. Despite their appearance, basilisks are vulnerable to the sign of Igni, and other means of using fire against them such as the Dancing Star Bomb. A well-timed explosion or burst of Igni can not only bring down a flying basilisk to ground level, but also distract the monster from being able to defend itself properly. They are skilled at using their wings and the talons of their feet. While in combat with witchers, they have been observed parrying sword strikes with their wings, and then leaping into the air to land devastating blows with their claws. While in the air, it can also spit acid at you from above. The second of today's draconian beasts is the fork tail. Unfortunately, this one is a bit less low rich than the basilisk. The fork tail is a medium sized lizard of the draconid class. It got its name from the end of the tail, which has two long bone spikes. Its skin comes in a wide variety of colors, yellow, marsh, poisonous green, and even blue. It is able to fly on its leathery wings, which, like those of a wyvern, are only his forelimbs. In addition to the spikes on the tail, three bone ridges grow on the head of a fork tail, a very large one on the forehead and two smaller ones on the sides of the head. All the ridges are directed towards the long neck, from which rows of long cone-shaped growths begin following to the tip of the tail. In addition to the dangerous spikes on the tail, some subspecies of fork tail also produce poison. Like most draconids, the fork tail is more than a capable flyer, though it can be brought to the ground with crossbow bolts or the bomb grape shot. They are just as aggressive as the wyvern, and make use of their foot talons in order to slash and kick at their prey. The barbs on the tip of the tail are also highly poisonous, and because of that, Golden Oriole is essential when hunting them. They will use the tail aggressively while in combat, and the only counter to it is to try to evade all the attacks. However, do not become so preoccupied with the tail that you forget about its head. Bites from the fork tail can come at a lightning speed, but they can be parried and countered. Finally, regarding oils, there is always a blade coating for every creature type in the Witcher, and Draconids are no exception. So, draconid oil is made out of dog tallow and ergot seeds. The third of today's creatures is the draco lizard, also more commonly known as the slizzard. The slizzard is a large reptile of the draconid class. They have grey scales, large leathery wings, a long tail with sharp spikes, and a mouth full of powerful sharp teeth. They come in many sizes, but the biggest ones are quite comparable to a dragon with which they often get confused. 
They have lightning speed and tremendous strength, and also are one of the few draconians who in addition to the dragons themselves can breathe fire, while they themselves are invulnerable to flame. In addition, the Slizzards of Blood and Wine have no eyes and navigate using echolocation. They prefer caves and cavities in sheer cliffs as dens, where their nests can be made. They are found throughout the continent, and the Witcher Journal has even more info on them. To quote, Slizzards are often mistaken for wyverns and forktails, yet make no mistake. They are nasty, terribly dangerous creatures, and confusing them for wyverns will end very badly for the confuser. While a wyvern can tear apart and devour an untrained man in seconds, only a slizzard can first bake him to a crisp with a waft of fiery breath. They are keenly aggressive and attack from both the ground and the air. Their goal during a fight is to get close enough to their foe to injure it with a breath of fire, or knock it down with a sonic blast. Like wyverns, slizzards can attack with their venom spiked tails. They like to disengage mid-flight to fly into the air and plummet down at high speed while spewing out balls of fire. Right before the igneous missiles emerge, you can observe a fiery ball forming in the monster's maw. While airborne, the slizzard can also attack with its claws and teeth. It is worthwhile to employ the signs of art and igni to force them to the ground. They are not, however, vulnerable to burning. Before tackling one of them, be certain to coat your blade in draconid oil. The fourth and final of today's creatures is arguably the most unique, known as the Draco Turtle. But don't let the name fool you, it is still a very big, powerful and dangerous creature. The Draco Turtle combines the features of a huge tortoise and a draconid. It has a long neck, a body covered in a shell, sharp claws and beak. Only the neck is not protected by armor plates. It also has a tail ending in a bump with bone outgrowths. The head of a Draco Turtle resembles the head of a Triceratops dinosaur. A beak-shaped mouth, bone growths on the forehead and on the sides of the head. The armor of a particularly nasty Draco Turtle supposedly reached the thickness of 20 centimeters, with the monster itself being 5 horses long, aka 10 meters. These beasts live in ponds and swamps. They probably feed on fish, drowners and other corpse eaters, as well as any other animals with the misfortune to get caught by them. Surprisingly, the best bit of information on these comes from the comic The Witcher Matters of Conscience. Once upon a time, some dwarf scouts discovered a mine with silver veins close to Vergen, which would allow the city to get rich. However, the only way to get to the mine was through the impenetrable forest and swamps of the Pontar Valley, which was inhabited by a huge ancient Draco Turtle. The first attempt to kill it had been unsuccessful, even with the participation of Saskia in the guise of a dragon. The monster simply fled into the depths of the swamps due to the previous influence of the sorcerers Sheila de Tanserville and Philippa Eilhart. And unfortunately the dragon lost control and burned 12 residents of Vergen too. Thus, to hunt the monster, Yarp and Zigrin offered to call a real professional, a witcher. So Geralt arrived at Vergen once again. Together with Saskia, Yarpan, the elf Maverin and the dwarf Egger, the witcher developed a plan to defeat the monster. The hunters arrived at a swamp where they lured the Draco Turtle with explosions, after which they throw magical lassos at it and clamp its claws in traps. Maverin throws a bomb at her back, which pierces a hole in her shell. At the same moment Geralt cuts off the tail of the monster. From all the pain and the shock, the creature becomes enraged and attacks Saskia, but the elf-shaped dragon repels her. The Witcher then sticks his sword into the heart of the monster, stripped of armor by the explosion, after which the Draco Turtle dies. Subsequently, the skull of the beast will be displayed over the gates of Vergen. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about probably the most convoluted and confusing category of creatures from the Witcher setting. I mean, necrophages or vampires, for example, also have a large number of members, but I'd say the Draconids are definitely the most confusing regarding which is which. Nevertheless, like I already said, I will return with a part 2 on these creatures, where we're gonna tackle the wyverns and the cockatrices of the world. 
If you enjoy these monster videos, please consider supporting the series, which you can do by watching to the end, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. As always, I also look forward to reading any thoughts you may have on the Draconids or the monsters described today in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching, and Melitale's blessings be upon you.